Conversion tracking is an important part out of any paid media campaign, and that functionality is available in the TikTok Ads Manager. And we're going to cover three main things about conversion and event tracking within TikTok. The first and most important thing is getting the TikTok pixel on your website. You can't do any sort of tracking unless you have the pixel set up. I'm only going to cover the tag manager way to do this, but we will show you a few other options you have to get it on your website, as well as a few other partners you can use depending on what CMS you're using. Then we'll cover the main parts about conversion and event tracking. The first will be URL based conversions. Think about it as a thank you page, a confirmation page, or maybe just a higher level like an add to cart page. It's pretty simple. And then last we'll go over the event tracking. This is going to be like click based button tracking. Other certain elements on your website to see where users are engaging after they click on your ad. And then you'll be able to see how you can view all of these actions and conversions within the TikTok ads manager dashboard. I'm on the main campaign screen in TikTok Ads Manager. So in order to start setting up anything with events or your pixel, we need to head up to Assets, and there we see Events. I haven't done anything with apps on TikTok yet. So for this video, we're solely going to be working with web events. So I'm going to click Manage for this option. And I created a new account just so we can walk through this steps because it says clear right in front of our faces right now. In order to create any conversions or any click events, we need to install the pixel first. So let's go and create the pixel. And I'm going to choose the TikTok pixel option. Not going to cover API here. So I chose that. Going to hit next. If you want to, you can copy and paste the code into your website, your landing page, your CMS, whatever you prefer. I'm going to choose this option here. Because right under my mouse, you can see that we can use Google Tag Manager. It's going to be the easiest way. But first, I'm going to have to name the pixel. Otherwise, it won't let me move forward. All right, just paste it in a name. I'm going to select the partner platforms. And there we see a few options, common brands like Shopify and Square. Choose the one that's best for you. In my case, I'm going to use Google Tag Manager. And then I'm going to hit Next. And there it's going to ask if I want to connect with Google Tag Manager. Understand that this connect process might be different depending on which partner you chose. But pretty much in any one of our previous videos on event tracking, we do use Google Tag Manager. So I'm just going to hit connect. What I couldn't show you because I had to blur out a lot of stuff is that I selected the appropriate Google account and then I selected the correct Tag Manager account and container. So now that that is connected, go down a little bit. I'm going to choose standard mode because I don't know how to use custom website code. So I'm going to leave it pretty simple. I'm going to turn on automatic advanced matching. And then I'm going to enter the website URL to see if our pixel was installed properly. Pasted the URL in there, and now we can verify. And there we see the code is verified, so now we can go to the next step. And now we see there are a few different ways we can create events to track specific actions. One of the easiest ways to track it is with URL events. This is if you have dedicated confirmation pages, thank you pages, add to cart pages that you would want to track specific steps. So TikTok is going to call it URL keywords, but think of it as more as your URL contains these words. Let me show you. First, I'm going to go up and select the type of event you'd want to track. You can see there are a few options here. So I'll place an order, search, submit form, subscribe, view content if it's just looking at a specific page. There's the add to cart, so we do see a few different options. I'm just going to go down and select the submit form option. I want to put in certain keywords that are part of the URL of the page a user is going to land on after they submit a form on our website. So this is just one thank you page we have on the website. Added that to the URL contains field if you want to. So I can add in a different URL if I want to combine multiple form submits into one event type. You see I cannot change it to an and. You may not be able to hear it, but I'm trying to click on this. So it's not going to have me add mandatory layers. So you cannot have a destination URL event where a user must visit one URL, but they also must visit a second URL. It's not how it works. It's going to have or functionality only, but I don't need that. So I'm going to trash the second option. If we look at our advanced settings, you can see you can add an event alias and potentially add a value to this specific event if you want to. And then we see the stat type. Do I want to count this event every single time a person performs it? Or do I just want to count it for once every unique person? So that part is good for me. I'm going to complete this setup. Yes, I'm going to proceed. This is the first time I'm going through it, so my pixel will be installed too. So you can see after I proceeded and saved it up in this top block right here, even though I have it blurred out, it's showing me my pixel ID. If you really want to confirm it and you're using Google Tag Manager, you can always go into your Tag Manager account. And this is what it looked like. You can see it just was installed nine minutes ago when I was recording this video. But the name might be a little funky, but that is my TikTok pixel. So I could just go in it 
And we see the part that I do have blurred out is my pixel ID. You can see in part of the code, it says TikTok analytics. So I know it's right. And we saw it was firing on all pages. So I just renamed it. So it's easier for me to see. I'm going to save this and then I'd have to publish it to make the name change stay. But I know my TikTok pixel is there. So let's go back and create another event. I'm going to have to go back up to assets, click events again. We want web events again, I'm going to click manage. So I just installed it. We've got a couple hits on the all pages main pixel. That's fine. But now I want to set up a few more web events. Let's do a pixel event again. Click next. Since as we know how to do a URL keyword event, I'm going to do a click based event this time. So let me name this. I'm going to do my partner platform again. There's tag manager. Click next. We're going to connect my tag manager account again. All right, we're good. I'm going to do standard mode. Apologize if this is a little repetitive, but we got to go through these steps every time. Now I'm going to type in my website URL just to verify the pixel code again. I right, paste it in the URL. Let's verify. Okay, we're good. So let's go to the next step. And here's where we're going to switch it up a little bit. Let's do click events. So I want to go down to add web elements. And there we see we need to install the pixel helper. So I'm going to click on this button. And there it's going to prompt me to install the Chrome extension. So I'm just going to click on these few buttons to make sure it's added to my Chrome. And then we can hop back into the TikTok events manager. I had to expand the part of the screen I'm recording just so you can see the pixel helper because it's going to be this tiny little logo up here. So I understand it could be pretty small on your screen. But since we came back from adding the Chrome extension, let's refresh. And now I can continue with adding web elements. And now our page loaded because we have the pixel helper added to our site. Now all the links to our YouTube videos are down below. And there's two little modes in the preview. We see element selection. We see if I move my mouse around a little bit, there's a few different areas depending on what the user can highlight and touch. So you might have to play around with this a little bit. There you go. You see I had to move my mouse a bunch of times. So I'm just going to click on this because it's highlighting just when someone will click on this YouTube video. Do I want to add this element? Yes. I can go down, click on another element, and add a second element to include within this one event. Scroll down a little bit. Again, got to be careful with your mouse. There we go. Just got the video. Okay, and those are the links to our different playlists. I could go all the way down and, and keep going, but just for the sake of this video, I'm going to cut it off at three. I'll have to go up and name my event. So in this case, eh, let's just do click button. Oh, wait, view content probably makes more sense. I'm going to stick with that one because they're watching our videos. But if you go to different event types, we see add to cart. So let's say you had a add to cart button on your page. You can highlight over that button, choose it as your element that you would want to record, select the proper event type name, and then go on and complete your setup. It'd be no different than someone interacting with an image potentially that they could expand, clicking on a download button, clicking on a subscribe button, those sort of elements. And if you're looking at this tool, it's kind of similar to the Facebook event setup tool. I think TikToks is a little bit more primitive, but if you're interested in doing this kind of process for your Facebook account, you can watch this video here. And just like we did with the URL keywords, you have advanced settings, create an event alias if you want to, add a specific value, and change the statistic type to either every, which is the default, or just one time if you want to keep it for a unique user. So now I'm going to go and complete the setup. I went back up to assets back under events and I'm under the web events section. So now we see the few things that I have set up. If I go under main pixel, there we see the submit form event I've created, book us to speak, and that was easy enough for me to test out. Let me pull a different tab over to this view. You can see on this screen right now, there's the pixel helper up top. If I click on it, under the main pixel, there is submit form. So this confirms that this event lives under the main pixel category. If I click on the submit form, it's showing me the event details. Timestamp, I chose standard mode. That was all part of my setup. If I want to show the URL, that is the URL where this event fired off. That's exactly how I had it set up. So if I hop back into events manager, there we see I visited this page a couple times. It's active, it's triggering events. All right, let's go back up. I'll hit back. And this one for YouTube link clicks. Let's look at this one. If I scroll down a little bit, I labeled this one view content. Let's go back to the website. All those were on the home page. I believe I did the first three. So I'm just going to click on an element here. Now I just went and paused the video. But if we go back up, did get a warning here. Pixel's taking too long to load. So that might be an issue for me to go back and see how I have it placed or how our website is structured. Maybe we need to look at how we have tag manager set up. But either way, I clicked on the video, started watching. There's the view content. If I go ahead and click on another one, pause that one. Now we see there's a second view content. 
So it's easy enough with the pixel helper to start going in, clicking in and seeing if the events are recording. If we go back to events manager, there is a way to go and test events. You can enter in your URL, a QR code will pop up, and then you can use your phone to start clicking around, test all the events that you set up, and you'll see on the screen where it says no test events have received yet, see if they're firing off and recording within TikTok. They recommend down here, it's best to use the TikTok app to scan the QR code, so you're staying within their system. But if you use Chrome, we already had to install this extension to be able to set up some of the click events. To me, it's easier to go on a desktop, start clicking around on my website, and then seeing those events recorded within the extension. So whether you have URL-based conversions you wanna track, or you just wanna see how people engage with certain elements of your site, clicking on certain buttons, certain elements like watching a video, like we just went over in this demo, or maybe certain sections within your navigation. Basic actions like that can be recorded within TikTok. Now, one thing I will admit that I didn't cover, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it, is if you have certain conversion actions, like a form that submits, but doesn't have a dedicated thank you page, how would you record that within TikTok? My honest answer is I don't know that one right now, but that's why we always encourage that your actions have a dedicated confirmation page. It's always gonna be the easiest way to record those conversions in any paid media platform, as well as your analytics tools. I know it's pretty basic. We just went over one example for each type of event tracking category. But if you have any other questions on how you may want to track events within TikTok, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.